What's up everybody? Look what showed up in the mail today. The Mamba F4 Power Tower. Been uh, looking to redo my GEP 210 which still has an old NACE 32 F3 board and uh, running one shot 125 ESCs. I figured for the price I'm going to go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, the Power Tower itself I paid 45 bucks for it. That includes the flight controller and the ESC so it's an absolute bargain. Hopefully it doesn't end up being a dud, but uh, we'll see once I get it installed into the get. So let's see what we get in the box. They do give you this nice little tub. A lot of new things seem to be coming in these tubs as well. We have the power tower itself. We have a nice little graphic that tells you all about the power tower. We'll cover those in a little bit here. Inside the rest of the box, they do also give you an extra wire, which by the way, uh, this is connected via wire instead of pins, so I'm excited about that as well. You get some uh, wire for your XT60 connector, and then you do also get a low ESR. This is a 470 microfarad 35 volt Sanyo low ESR capacitor. Uh, which is uh, going to make me believe it probably doesn't have a lot of filtration on the ESC, but for 45 bucks, what can you ask for? So let's take a look at some of the measurements on this stuff here. Let's see what it weighs out. The entire stack, by the way, comes nicely put together. The flight controller has gummies in between it, so it's uh, soft mounted on the board. Uh, you have all of the standoffs. They look to be 5 millimeter standoffs in between the boards. Uh, with all of the standoffs, we're coming in at 20.2 grams. Now, the reason I was excited about this board also is because it was supposed to be a very um, low height flight stack. Um, the GEP 210 only has 15 millimeter standoffs, so we have 15 millimeters to work with. So let's see if we're going to get lucky and be able to fit this in there. Uh, unfortunately, we are coming in at 18 millimeters for the entire stack. That includes the 5 millimeter standoffs. So I am going to have to figure out some other standoffs to lower the height a little bit. The uh, width of this, uh, the actual ESC seems to be some of the widest part here. So we're coming in at 36 millimeters. Let's just see what it is at the gummies is at self. So we are at 30, so 38 millimeters uh, width, and our length, including the connector here, we're coming in at 49 and a half or 50 millimeters, uh, which I should be fine with that. I'm more worried about this side. I believe I have 36 millimeters um, width, so this may be just a little bit too wide. Um, so we got the height. Let's see what else we got here. Let's go ahead and pull this apart. So let's see some of the um, specifications on the flight controller. We do have an F405 processor. There's an MPU 6000 gyro. They do include 16 megabytes of black, block, uh, black box flash, uh, which is nice. And there's also a Betaflight OSD on board as well, including a BEC, which is 5 volts, rated up to 1.5 uh, amps. Now the flight controller itself, let's go ahead and take this out here. So on the flight controller, uh, we do have uh, what looks to be three UARTs. Uh, we have UART uh, 1, 3, and 6. We have uh, camera control for the camera. We have um, uh, the smart, uh, smart audio for the VTX. Uh, we also have... Uh, a buzzer and an LED controller uh, on here as well. The flight controller by itself comes in at 5.8 grams. Let's go ahead and see what this thing actually is in width. So we are looking at uh, 38, uh, just a little bit over 38 uh, in, uh, in width and our height is also at 38 and our and our height comes in at uh, five millimeters 
So I think this flight controller should do very well compared to the Naze 32 F3 that I'm currently running. Definitely a lot more features. Looking forward to getting OSD finally into the GEP210. Uh, let's take a look at the ESC. So the ESC itself uh, can support 3 to 6S LiPos. Um, it, it can do 40 amps continuous per motor and bursts up to 50 amps. Um, that it can do for up to 5 seconds. The uh, ESC does have a current sensor built into it. It can do 169 amps. Uh, BL Heli D-Shot 600, so it does not have 32-bit, uh, but that's okay. Uh, a lot better than the one-shot uh, 125 that I'm currently using. It does not have a lot of filtration, though. Uh, very minimal capacitors uh, built into it. I would assume that's probably why they are giving you the low ESR capacitor. I may end up swapping this or swap, swapping this out for a 1,000 uh, microfarad capacitor instead of the 470, though. Let's see what this thing weighs by itself. So we are coming in at 12.1 uh, 12 uh, grams. The ESC is 36, almost 37 millimeters in width. Our length comes in at 47 and a half, and our thickness or our height comes in at 6.9, basically seven millimeters uh, thick. Um, so I am definitely excited. Um, I have some new motors coming. That's one of the other reasons I went this uh, route because my current uh, one shot 125 DYS uh, uh, ESCs are not able to handle larger motors. I wanted to go from 1806 to 2306. I'll have those 2306s coming soon, and we'll talk about those as well. Um, but uh, for now, I think that'll wrap it up. Let me know if you have any questions at all in the comments below. Otherwise, look out for another video soon on getting this into the GEP210, and then uh, we'll give it a, 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 some uh, test flights. So thanks very much for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to click the like button. Otherwise, have a fantastic day.